Let's first take a look at the problems or the questions you got correct because there you were given the formula and you were asked to write the name. The formulas that were given to you um, here, copper for copper 2 phosphate, notice that the phosphate is a polyatomic ion, PO4, and to communicate that there's two of them, parentheses are needed around the polyatomic ion formula, the PO4. And to denote that there's two of them, the two goes outside of the parentheses. Same thing with the cyanide. There are two cyanides in lead to cyanide, so parentheses are needed. So let's look at chromium-3 chloride. Here, it appears you provided or included the actual charge on the metal in the formula, which is not necessary. Remember, we talked about um, formulas are written as neutral compounds, no charge, because the positives and the negatives cancel, so there's no need to write uh, the charge on an actual ion. The other thing is you only had two chlorides here. You needed three because each chloride is negative one. Iron three hydroxide. Here you were close. The only thing you were lacking were the parentheses around the hydroxide because you did have three hydroxides, which is correct. Let's take a look at these two at the top. Um, nickel 2 hydroxide. Well, you started it correct, but you didn't finish it. You named the cation, the metal, as nickel, and you did include the correct Roman numeral because the charge on the nickel was 2 because there are two hydroxides. So you just needed to finish that name. The next one, copper phosphate was almost correct. You just didn't, did not include the Roman numeral to indicate the charge on each of the copper ions. Remember that Roman numeral is required for most metal ions except group 1 and group 2 and the 5 I mentioned in class. Here you needed to include the charge, but the charges for um, the charges on each copper ion, and each copper ion is a positive one. Everything else on this uh, particular problem looks good. Here you just didn't finish naming the compound, calcium nitrate. Notice no Roman numeral is needed in the name calcium nitrate because calcium is a group 2 metal and the charge on a calcium ion is always positive 2. Iron 3 bromide you did not provide a name of course but there's the cation iron Fe and following that is Br which is the anion. Iron is not in group 1 or group 2 and is not one of the five metals that I listed so it requires a Roman numeral depending on what the charge is on the iron. Because each bromide is negative one and there's three of them, those total, the three bromides total negative three and the one iron needs to have a positive three charge therefore iron three bromide is correct. The next one is provide the formula for lead 4 oxide. Here it's PB for lead, O for oxide, but we need two oxides because each lead, or the lead, there's only one, the lead ion has a positive 4 charge. So in order to cancel out the positive 4 charge, the contribution of the oxides or oxides needs to be negative four 
And the way to get negative 4 is to have two oxides. So therefore, O2, PbO2. The formula for barium nitrite is Ba for barium. And looking up nitrite, because it's a polyatomic ion, is NO2. That is not one of the particular polyatomic ions I asked you to memorize, but it's still fair game because you have the list uh, available, the list of polyatomic ions available in OWL or in your book. But anyway, uh, barium nitrite, BaNO2, and there's parentheses around the nitrite, and there's a 2 subscript because you need two nitrites for each barium because barium is positive two and each nitrite is negative one. Chromium three oxide is Cr2O3. You provided CrO3. Remember that the Roman numeral is the charge on the chromium which is positive three the oxide, or each oxide, is always negative 2. So in order for those charges to cancel, positive 3 and negative 2, one of each of them is not going to be sufficient. Because if you only had one chromium and one oxide, the, the net charge would not be 0, it would be positive 1. So you need more than one of probably each of them. So you play around with the numbers and you come up with the fact that you need two chromiums which total positive six and three oxides which total negative six. How do you know how to do that? It's trial and error um, and you just need to play around with the numbers in order to find the the simplest ratio of ions that will provide a total net zero charge. Looking at the top of the screen, Cr2O3 is chromium 3 oxide. You were close, you just needed to include the Roman numeral for the charge on each chromium. Again, here's a situation where oxide, each oxide is always negative 2, and you have 3 of them, so that totals negative 6. So therefore, each chromium must be positive 3 because there's 2 of them, and those 2 add up to positive 6. So it's chromium 3 oxide, again the 3 is the charge on each chromium. And the next one, zinc phosphate, it appears you just spelled phosphate incorrectly. Down at the bottom of the screen, magnesium sulfide. Here, uh, sulfide has a negative 2 charge, and magnesium, because it's in group 2, has a positive 2 charge. So one of each of those ions is sufficient. So you do not need two sulfides because your formula, MgS2, would leave the formula with a net negative two charge because you have one too many sulfides.